What's up and happy Monday. Welcome into another edition of Three Point Stance presented by Mountain Dew. I am Megan Triplett and that is John Roser and we got a lot to get to and let's start first start with the Memphis Grizzlies. The Grizzlies were back in action. It was preseason game number one and they defeated the Minnesota Timberwolves 107 to 105. There were a lot of great takeaways from this game, Roser. Uh, I, I, the, the number one thing is job and just how and I know it is, and it is just preseason, so I, I really don't like overreacting to preseason games. But, hey, that's what we're here to do, so let's overreact. Um, or maybe we're not going to overreact to it because he's just going to be this awesome. Um, he was the best player on the court, and just how in control he was of everything. Um, getting to his spots. I mean, he does not look like a second-year player. He looks like a 10-year veteran. Um that really is what stood out to me, and it's just, you know, I think the Grizzlies are going to be better than a lot of people think they are. Um, I think the continuity that they have and the chemistry they have, I think that's real, and I think once you get Jaron and Justice back into the fold, if Justice is ever able to play, because, you know, injuries have been a big part of his career, I mean, I, I, I think they could be a pretty good team this year. I really do. Yeah, I agree with you. I think this game was not just surprising in the sense of, like, we were trying to wait to see, like, what it was going to look like, especially no Jaron, no Justice. Brandon Clark did not play as well. And so you're like, okay, these are the different lineups, the different, the, the difference, you know, the starting, who's going to start, are we going to go small, are we going to go big? We did, there's so many questions. And when you, what you see the product that they put out there, they're playing the Minnesota Timberwolves, but you're playing the number one draft picks. So there's a lot more people are talking about on that side of things. But when Ja comes out there, he's already, he was already being played, you know, they're restricting his minutes. We knew that he was going to play around the mid twenties, mm -hmm. a guy who's able to score 20 points, 11 assists, and literally in what, 25 minutes of that game. Another great takeaway was Desmond Baines seeing the rookie back out, the rookie out there. He was five from eight from shooting from the field, two from three from the three point line. Um, it was just a great thing to see because that, they, the players have talked about it throughout training camp is that the rookies are sponges. They're asking questions, but we got to see what it meant to have a group that was kind of like, there was not a lot of like crazy new pieces. They know a lot about each other, their family, and you got to see that camaraderie and it seemed as if it's going to kind of play out. Obviously coach chicken said that there's certain, some things that they still want to work out and we'll get to see them make those adjustments, especially tonight with game two against the, the Timberwolves. Let's now talk about some college football. The biggest storyline of college football was a shoe being thrown and Florida <laughs> going down to LSU and LSU beating the number six team. This LSU team who's on a postseason ban, LSU is not the same LSU defending champs, but I mean, for Dan Mullen and his group, now we're left to figuring out, okay, if they don't beat Alabama, or if they do beat Alabama in the SEC championship game, would a college football playoff committee put a two-loss team in? Uh, I don't think so. Well, they, now, the only way, yeah, if they beat Alabama this weekend, I do probably think they'll end up getting in. Um, and that would probably knock, I would guess, Ohio State out. Or if Notre Dame beats Clemson again, because I think that's then two loss to Clemson, and then you start looking at Clemson's resume, and they have two losses to Notre Dame, and you look at the rest of their schedule, and it's like, uh, there's not really anything impressive on here. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think if Florida beats Alabama, that they'll be able to get there. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think Alabama is going to probably beat the living hell out of them. Uh, <laughs> Florida has been kind of, they, they hadn't, I mean, I didn't see the LSU game coming. Nobody did. Cause LSU also sucks. Um, but it, like Florida ever since that win over Arkansas, where they looked really good against Arkansas, um, they not they have not looked that good. It's been kind of shaky. It looked like for a little bit of the season their defense was starting to get better. And then these last couple of weeks it started tailing off again. Tennessee got the backdoor cover against them a week ago. And then they come out and they just totally were looking ahead. And then the fog was crazy and everything like that. But LSU's also got to play with it too. Um that being said, Florida still had a chance to tie the game at the end and kid just missed a 51 yard yeah. field goal. Um after LSU made a 57 yard field goal. Uh so, I mean, look, it, we're probably just headed towards it's, – it's probably just going to be the same four teams it is. Uh, it's going to be Alabama. It's going to be Clemson. It's going to be Notre Dame. It's going to be Ohio State. I think whoever loses the ACC championship game will drop to the four seed, and Ohio State will probably move up to the three seed um, just because they're not going to want Clemson and Notre Dame playing for a third time. Uh, the committee's not going to want that. Um, you know, it's a shame Iowa State has two losses. 
Because if you really look at strength of schedule and who you've beaten, they they have more impressive wins than like mm-hmm. anybody else in the country does. If you look at their schedule, they have they have the most impressive resume. Uh, they just got a couple of those. Uh, they they lost to Louisiana. Um, they had another loss too, but they've got a rematch with Oklahoma this weekend in the Big Twelve title game. A lot would have to break right for them to be able to jump up that high. So I don't think it's going to happen. But if you just look at you know, because we talk about how many games do you play and who have you played? Um, Iowa State has the most impressive wins, but yeah, it'll, it, it's going to be the same for it. Clemson, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Alabama. We still have to wait and see. I, I, you know what? I wanted some craziness in Florida. They totally messed up the craziness that I really wanted to happen. They didn't. They didn't show up. They didn't show up against this, L, this, this LSU team. And Dan Mullen said that he blamed his offense. He's not talking about that shoe being thrown if it should have been a penalty. But, you know, when you look at the SEC for Alabama, now it's looking as if they're going to get it. And I, you know, I'm still up and down. Should Ohio State be in the college football, you know, playoff? Obviously, they have to win, you know, the Big Ten, then playing the championship. But we shall see what happens. It's some craziness going on. And there was some craziness last because the big game in the NFL on Sunday night football it was between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Buffalo Bills Bills uh Ben Roethlisberger throws two interceptions but the Buffalo Bills coming out and for Pittsburgh now you're like okay we're seeing more of these holes that we kind of saw you know with the Ravens with Dallas now it's like what is going on uh I mean I think it's one, they have running the ball issues. They have issues running yeah. the ball with James Conner and Benny Snell. Um, they, they haven't been able to really run the ball that well. And the other thing is, there's other things too. Roethlisberger obviously is not a spring uh-huh. chicken anymore. Um, he gets rid of the ball a lot quicker than he used to. That's because he obviously doesn't want to get hurt. Um, he's got an injury history. Uh, but, you know, he doesn't escape around like he used to. Like he used to. He was always so great at that. He can move around and keep plays alive because he's just so hard to bring down. Um, mm-hmm. And the biggest thing is that they're the injuries on defense. They're piling up for them. Uh, Bud Dupree, Devin Bush, Spillane, um, mm-hmm. the injuries are really starting to pile up for them on defense. And it's a lot at that linebacker position. Um, and they, them more than anybody, because of Roethlisberger um, and some of the vets they have on that team, they need the number one seed. Because only the, the number one seed is the only team that gets the bye, that gets the bye in the playoffs. So that number one seed is very important, and as of as of last night, they don't have it anymore. Kansas City has it, um, but Buffalo is they're hot right now. They are a team to watch out for. Um, Super Bowl contender? Don't know yet. I, yeah, I, yeah, I just don't. I mean, I don't know if I trust Josh Allen yet. And, and like in the, in the playoffs, I, he's been. I mean, he's he's had an amazing regular season, um, but. You know, we'll we'll see we'll see when they get to the playoffs. How is he going to be in a big time playoff game when you know you're playing Patrick Mahomes or you're playing a Ben Roth you're playing Ben Roethlisberger in the playoffs? How is uh, how is that going to go? Uh, but no, Pittsburgh they need to get healthy. They just played. It all happened in these last three games. They just yeah. played yeah. three games in eleven days. Yeah, the they've had. Sh- They've had short weeks, and that's something that, like, you know, we, we have to mention because of, you know, COVID protocols and games being kind of pushed back and postponed. So that's also important. And as you mentioned, if they can get that, you know, number one seat, that's going to be very, very important for them because, I mean, at this point, it's like, as you said, getting healthy is, is definitely very key. And yesterday, from what we saw from Ben Roethlisberger, it wasn't the same, you know, Big Ben that we had kind of seen earlier in the season when the Steelers team was undefeated. And we were saying, this is the team to beat. This is the team to beat. And Buffalo, they're up and down. I know everyone's saying, like, they're, they're kind of like, oh, Buffalo Bills could be the, the, the new team. Maybe not so fast, but it was a big win. You know, they looked impressive. And the fact that they were able to kind of contain that offense, but then their offense was, was able to get hot and move the ball down the field the way they did. You got to give your props to them. And now we're getting closer to that that, that playoff push. We're, we're looking at the seedings and the percentages. And I can't wait to figure out who is going to go to the playoffs, who's going to get the number one seed in all the divisions. Roser, so much that we just talked about. Same time, same same place. Next week, we'll break it all down for you and give us give you our three point stances. See you then.